Michael. Good morning, children of God. Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. My name is Kristen Wallove, and I serve on the staff here as Director of Spiritual Formation and Membership. And I am so glad that you are here today, that we can worship together. So I have a few announcements to share with you today. First and foremost, Happy Father's Day to uh, all the fathers, grandfathers, uncles, mentors, father figures in our lives. We're so glad that you can celebrate with us today. On that same note, you may have noticed we have a beautiful photo op in the narthex right outside here in the right-hand corner. Please, after the service, take advantage. We'll take your picture for you and send it to you electronically. Have a nice family photo, or if you have a graduate, just enjoy that photo op and please take advantage after the service today. We are celebrating, again, um, a baptism of Sarah Andrew, daughter of Ryan and Aaron Andrew, today. So we're very excited about another baptism, welcoming another into the family of Christ. Next Sunday is June 27th already, and it is Native American Ministry Sunday, and our very own Carol Brents will share about the ministry of Jesus Christ among our Native American peoples, and we'll, we will be collecting a special offering for that. This is a summer of book clubs. We have a book club for every month this summer. June's book club is June 30th at 7 o'clock right here at Asbury in the library. So everyone is welcome to purchase that book and come ready to discuss. It'll be about a 90-minute discussion. And all the details are in your worship booklet with the book and all of those things. So um, please RSVP to me so I know how many folks to expect. I appreciate that. Again, that information is in your bulletin. Vacation Bible School, VBS is almost here. It begins July 11th. Registration information is on the church website and the Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to be holding adult VBS again this year as I did in 2019. We had a great time. So we'll be following the same theme, the Knights of the North Castle for adults. It'll just be held during the VBS time in the library. If you have kids, you can drop them off and come and hang out with us. And if you don't have kids, you can just come and, and go right along with the kids' curriculum. So everyone is welcome to attend that as well. The nursery today um, is relocated because we're doing some renovations. So if you need the nursery, um, I believe that is in room 118, Tom. 118, the nursery? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it is in room 118 down the hallway there. So if you need any help, just ask anyone and we'll be happy to take you there. Uh, be sure to check out all of the announcements in your worship bulletin. Uh, there are lots of um, details there for you. We don't want you to miss a thing. So today we begin a new worship series called And Immediately. It's a look at the ministry of Jesus as told in the Gospel of Mark. So we'll be working through the Gospel of Mark for these next few weeks. As Je Jesus calms the storm and heals the sick and visits his hometown along with many other adventures. So you won't want to miss it. So before we pass the piece, Pastor Tom would like to make an announcement. It's one of those days I, I feel like I'm one step behind every time I, I go to move. So, yeah, Kristen's looking at me like, huh? But anyway, everybody take a deep breath, including me. Um, so Nursery in 118, as Kristen already mentioned, the other announcement is a couple weeks ago I let you know that, unfortunately, our maintenance worker, Craig Brown, uh, decided to take a job with his own church, how dare he, uh, and go work for them. Um, He's only a minute from work instead of having to drive all the way from Laurel here. So um, we praise God for his service here over the past four years. But I am pleased to announce that we have hired a new maintenance worker who starts tomorrow. So we want to take a moment to welcome Bob Love. Bob is going to be our new maintenance worker. And so not only is a part of the Asbury Church family, he's now part of the Asbury staff and so we rejoice in that so if you are around the building in the next few weeks and you happen to see Bob moving around please take a moment to welcome him to the staff and wish him well uh, as he uh, takes on this new role and responsibility as a part of our church family so we are blessed by that friends with that that's the end of our long list of announcements um, there is going to be a ministry moment about connection cards in a minute Kristen's excited about that but in the meantime, let us take a moment to, to share the peace of Christ with one another.
Please be seated. So one quick announcement that I forgot to make is that if you are interested in going on women's retreat, the registration form is now available at the Welcome Center. All women are welcome. Information about that in your bulletin. So now if you would be so kind as to take out your connection cards, and we're going to go over these. They're a little purple piece of paper today. So if you would take those out, I would really appreciate it. So I'd like to talk to you today, and Pastor Tom is right when he said, I'm excited about connection cards, because I do get excited about connection, because we want you to be better connected to the church, to God, and to others, and we want to connect to you as well, because God made us to know and be known. So that is part of what the connection cards are about, as well as our ability to care for you. So when you regularly sign in it is very noticeable to us when many weeks go by and you do not sign in and that helps us to know and reach out to you in love and care to make sure that everything is okay we want to care for you so the anatomy of a connection card if you look at the front is just fill in your contact information and you know if if you've been going here forever and a day and we have your contact information and nothing has changed you don't need to fill out the entire thing your first and last name is perfectly fine. You can fill it out for your whole family on one card. Everyone can do individual cards. It doesn't matter. We're just happy to know that you're here. Um, and then in the bottom, it says, please place this connection card in the offering plate. So that's where we'd like you to put them. Uh, because sometimes we find connection cards just all over the place. Um, so if you put them in the offering uh, plate, then we will find them in a timely manner. And we want to get right back to you if you have any uh, needs that week. So please do that. Thank you so much. Check which service you're at, the top right-hand corner. Check 10 o'clock service for today. And also, um, you know, are you a regular attender, a member, something else? And guests, if you fill out your information, uh, we're very glad to have that. And we promise not to bombard you with a lot of emails. We just want to check in and see if you need anything or have any questions. We want to help and connect you. So the back, you'll see this is a refreshed connection card. We've made it with less writing and more room, um, to, more space to make it look a little cleaner. So we've made a lot of room for prayer requests because we take that very seriously here at Asbury. There is a group every week that meets and prays over every single prayer request. We take this, again, very seriously. On the bottom, you can check whether you want your prayer request to be public, private, or posted in the bulletin. So if you mark private, that means that you are giving permission for us to verbally share with others to pray for you and whatever the situation is. Um, if you mark post in bulletin, then we will post it in the bulletin, the name or situation that you uh, have listed. Now, if you mark private, we will keep that confidential within our prayer group. And in, if nothing is marked, we assume it is private. So it's helpful to us if you mark one or more of those. Thank you. So in the right-hand side is our list of ministries that's current. So there are a lot of uh, opportunities on here. Uh, ministries you may be interested in serving in, um, or you just may want more information about something. Huh, what is book club? I don't know, I think I should sign up for that. So if you wanna sign up for book club, you, you check book club, and when we get the connection cards back, a volunteer goes through every single connection card, and then we make sure the proper people get the connection cards that refer to them and their ministries and then we contact folks so if you checked june book club i would take care of that and i would contact you and give you any information or ask and answer any questions that you have about that so that is my uh, ministry moment on the connection card again it excites me because i love connection and i feel like god that's why god created us to be connected to god and to each other so um, please uh, participate in that. Thank you for that, and God bless. Good morning. In the midst of life's storms, God is there. In the darkness and terror, God is with us. Rise up, people of God, for you are loved and saved. Please join me in the opening prayer. Mighty God, who speaks a word of peace to calm our troubled sea. Caring God, who nudges us away from fear and toward faith. Ever-present God, 
who fills us with awe, but also raises many questions without easy answers. Open our eyes to see you in our boat today. Strengthen our hearts for the challenges that lie ahead. Open our ears this hour to hear the word you speak. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson this fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from the Old Testament, the first book of Samuel, chapter 17, verses 4 through 11, 19 through 23, and 32 through 49, reading from the Common English Bible. A champion named Goliath from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. He was more than nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he wore bronze scale armor weighing 125 pounds. He had bronze plates on his shins, and a bronze scimitar hung on his back. His spear shaft was as strong as the bar on a weaver's loom, and its iron head weighed 15 pounds. His shield bearer walked in front of him. He stopped and shouted at the Israelite troops, Why have you come and taken up battle formations? I am the Philistine champion and you are Saul's servants. Isn't that right? Select one of your men and let him come down against me. If he is able to fight me and kill me, then we will become your slaves. But if I overcome him and kill him, then you will become our slaves and you will serve us. I insult Israel's troops today. The Philistine continued, give me an opponent and we'll fight. When Saul and all Israel heard what the Philistines said, they were distressed and terrified. Jesse said to his son David, Your brothers and all the other Israelites are with King Saul fighting the Philistines in the Elah Valley. So David got up early in the morning, left someone in charge of the flock, and loaded up and left, just as his father Jesse had instructed him. He reached the camp right when the army was taking up their battle formation and shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines took up their battle formations opposite each other. David left his things with an attendant and ran to the front line. When he arrived, he asked how his brothers were doing. Right when David was speaking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came forward from the Philistine ranks and said the same things he had said before. David listened. Don't let anyone lose courage because of this Philistine, David told Saul. I, your servant, will go out and fight him. You can't go out and fight this Philistine, Saul answered David. You're still a boy, but he's been a warrior since he was a boy. Your servant has kept his father's sheep, David replied to Saul. And if ever a lion or a bear came and carried off one of the flock, I would go after it, strike it, and rescue the animal from its mouth. If it turned on me, I would grab it at its jaw, strike it, and kill it. Your servant has fought both lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them because he has insulted the army of the living God. The Lord, David added, who rescued me from the power of both lions and bears will rescue me from the power of this Philistine. Go, Saul replied to David, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own gear, putting a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David strapped his sword on over the army, but he couldn't walk around well because he'd never tried it before. I can't walk in this, David told Saul, because I've never tried it before. So he took them off. He then grabbed his staff and chose five smooth stones from the stream bed. He put them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag and with sling in hand, went out to the Philistine. The Philistine got closer and closer to David, and his shield bearer was in front of him. When the Philistine looked David over, 
He sneered at David because he was just a boy, reddish brown and good looking. The Philistine asked David, am I some sort of dog that you come at me with sticks? And he cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said to David, and I'll feed your flesh to the wild birds and the wild animals. But David told the Philistine, you are coming against me with sword, spear, and scimitar. But I come against you in the name of the Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel's army, the one you've insulted. Today the Lord will hand you over to me. I will strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will feed your dead body and the dead bodies of the entire Philistine camp to the wild birds and the wild animals. Then the whole world will know that there is a God on Israel's side. And all those gathered here will know that the Lord doesn't save by means of sword and spear. The Lord owns this war, and he will hand all of you over to us. The Philistine got up and moved closer to attack David. And David ran quickly to the front line to face him. David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. He slung it and hit the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13, reading from the New Century Version of the Bible. We are workers together with God, so we beg you, do not let the grace that you receive from God be for nothing. God says, at the right time, I heard your prayers. On the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you that the right time is now, and the day of salvation is now. We do not want anyone to find fault with our work, so nothing we do will be a problem for anyone. But in every way, we show we are servants of God, in accepting many hard things, in troubles, in difficulties, and in great problems. We are beaten and thrown into prison. We meet those who become upset with us and start riots. We work hard, and sometimes we get no sleep or food. We show we are servants of God by our pure lives, our understanding, patience, and kindness by the Holy Spirit, by true love, by speaking the truth, and by God's power. We use our right living to defend ourselves against everything. Some people honor us, but others blame us. Some people say evil things about us, but others say good things. Some people say we are liars, but we speak the truth. We are not known, but we are well known. We seem to be dying, but we continue to live. We are punished, but we are not killed. We have much sadness, but we are always rejoicing. We are poor, but we are making many people rich in faith. We have nothing, but really we have everything. We have spoken freely to you in Corinth and have opened your hearts, our hearts to you. Our feelings of love for you have not stopped, but you have stopped your feelings of love for us. I speak to you as if you were my children. Do to us as we have done. Open your hearts to us. This is the word of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so you see before you Sarah Elaine Andrews, the daughter of Aaron and Ryan Andrew, who is here to be baptized. We are excited about that. So a few questions for our parents here. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? We're going to skip the next two questions there and go down to the third one. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Awesome. Friends, the next questions are for you, so we encourage you to join in. Do you, as Christ's body the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in, Christian, in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? To help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God, be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in a way that leads to life. As we get ready to pray over the water, and Pastor Genevieve is going to lead us through that, a reminder that there is some bold face type in that prayer that you all are invited to participate in. So just remember that as we pray together so you can keep your eyes open for this. Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and all who receive it, to wash away sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. We're going to get you a little wet. It's okay, though. Ready? Sarah Lane, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, work within you that being born by water and the Spirit, you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Members of the household of God, we commend Sarah here to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. 
As members together with you in the body of Christ, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. Amen. There you go. You want to go? You can go ahead. That's okay. That's okay. It's all right. Friends, I invite you to join me as we sing together those last two verses of Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you, little one. Let us welcome our newest sister in Christ. Amen. You're welcome. You guys can be seated. Yeah. Welcome, Sarah. <laughs> Are there any children who would like to come up and join me for a children's message today? Some of my usual uh, children friends are not here. Anyone feeling childish today? <laughs> oh, Susie, okay. Susie's going to be my child today. Yay. Where's Peyton? Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you. Happy Father's Day to all of the um, dads and uncles and... Um, pop-ups and friends and all those people out there and I wanted to I did this at the early service so I'm gonna do it here too in honor of Father's Day and because um, my father and Mr. Harmon are two of the biggest fa bad dad jokers in the world I'm just gonna share a couple of dad jokes okay and you can use these for later too so what where do you learn to make a banana split <clears throat> Sunday school Where do boats go when they're sick? To the dock. Those are bad, but they're dad jokes. Okay, what do you call someone? Wait, wait, oops, some wrong one. Did you hear the rumor about the butter? Well, I'm not gonna spread it. Why, why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? It was too tired. Uh-uh. No. Okay, well, there. I have given you some good, some good uh, jokes to, to torture your families with today. <clears throat> All righty, so I, I brought a towel today for my sermon. Oh, you can hold it? Okay, you can hold it. You can hold it. I, I really took some great care in folding that towel. I'm sure that you fold lots of towels. Being, yes, you do fold lots of towels, yes. So you don't fold them like, show me how you fold your towel. That's even better. I love that we have different ways to, okay. Oh, that's even prettier. Thank you. All right, so what can we use this towel for? Like what are some things we use this towel for? <clears throat> Drying dishes, yep, anything else? Our hands, yep, if they're wet, yeah. Maybe like mop up a spill, something like that, okay. Okay, well I don't wanna do those things with this towel. How come? Why can't we just take our beautifully folded towel that we took such special care and put it right there and let everyone enjoy our work and look at how beautiful the towel is? It, we could do that too? We, okay, okay. That seems a little silly though. I mean, I guess, I guess it would be okay if we used it, right? Because when, when we use it, it gets all crumpled up and it takes away the fun. Okay. So in our Bible lesson for today, we don't have towels, but we do have a storm. 
This is one of my favorite. We're going to hear it in just a minute. Our Bible scripture is about when the disciples and Jesus went out in a boat. So the disciples started the day off all neat and folded like the towel. They were teaching with Jesus, doing their usual kind of thing. And then they got into the boat to go, you know, have a little rest, and Jesus fell asleep. So this big storm kicks up, right? And then the disciples, they get like this. <sighs> Twisted up and bunched up. Scared of the storm. All like that. Does that ever happen to you? Yes, happens to me. So they're, they're freaking out and they're all twisted and they're all wave, you know, full of waves and stuff. And then finally they get this good idea. Let's ask Jesus to help us. Right? So they wake Jesus up and they say, help us. We're going to drown. And Jesus says, do, do you think he, he gets all crazy with them? Like, no. He says, guys, peace. Be still. And the winds and the waves calm by his voice. Hmm. And he reminds them, God is always with you. You don't have to be afraid. So I know we have storms in our lives. And our storms could be storms like that. I know that some of us are very afraid of actual thunderstorms and lightning and wind and things like that. But other storms, like things happening in our families, maybe somebody is sick, um, maybe we're having a really bad year at school or at our job or whatnot, all those storms in our lives, when we get like that, we can do the same thing. We can ask Jesus to come and be with us and help us to calm those storms in our lives too. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let's say a prayer together. I didn't fold the towel right. <laughs> Lord, we thank you so much for this day to be together to worship you. We thank you for all of the fathers and the father figures in our lives who has helped, have helped to raise and take care of us and who are just always there to support us and love us. And we thank you especially, Lord, that you are our wonderful father. Help us to remember when we are having a storm in our lives, a real one or one inside of us or whatever's going on, that we can always talk to you, Lord. We can always ask you for your guidance. You will send the Holy Spirit to comfort and to guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel lesson is from Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, reading from the New International Version of the Bible. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. As we enter into this time of unpacking the word, let us start that time with um, a bit of prayer. Let us pray together. Oh God, we gather here in this place to worship you. We do this through word and song, but also through the gift of prayer. Open us up to hear your voice more clearly. Open us up to see your acts of power in the world. Open us up to touch the world in a way that changes us. Be with us as we are gathered here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So friends, today we kick off a brand new worship series, as Kristen mentioned. It's called And Immediately, um, because we are going to be diving into the Gospel of Mark. And if you do a search on the word immediately, it doesn't really matter which version you use, um, you'll find that the Gospel of Mark uses it like 27 or 29 times, which is more than double any other Gospel. And considering that the Gospel of Mark only has 16 chapters, 
That's a lot of and immediately to go around. It is the action gospel. It's clearly, it's clear that, that Jesus is more interested in doing in this gospel than, than in talking. You don't get the Sermon on the Mount in Mark. You don't get the parables of Luke uh, in Mark. You don't get these long episodes where Jesus is teaching with individuals or with groups like you do in the Gospel of John. Mark is about what Jesus does, and so Jesus is moving today. That is really what it boils down to. And even though he was teaching last week, in the last couple of weeks, he was talking to the crowd, today he is moving so after a long day, he is tired and ready to move someplace else. So he invites the disciples to climb into the boat, and they do. And they get in the boat, and they sail off, and Jesus, he's wiped out. He goes back and lays down on some netting or, or some rope, and as he is there, he falls asleep, and he is out. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I can understand this, Jesus, because Sarah will tell you that if, if a nuclear bomb were to go off outside our window, I would not wake up. Now, that's if she's home. If the cats get into a fight, if one of the kids gets up, if something happens, I never wake up. She always wakes up. Now, if she's not there, I do. I think it has something to do with I know that she's going to wake up, so I just sleep right through it, which is just fine by me. Jesus does the same thing. He is asleep. The storm comes up. The wind is raging. The waves are coming over the side. The lightning is flashing. The thunder is clamping. Boom. And Jesus sleeps right through it. The disciples are not asleep. As the wind starts to come up, you can see their anxiety begin to rise and their emotions get out of control. And pretty soon, they are freaking out as Heather described it. They are freaking out. And they don't know what else to do. So, hey, let's wake Jesus up because he can fix this, right? Or if nothing else, he can be anxious with us. Jesus doesn't do that, though, does he? He gets up, he calms the wind and the waves, and then he speaks to the disciples, what are you guys afraid of? What is the thing that you are most worried about? This shouldn't be it. There's a lot more things in life that should scare you, but this shouldn't be it. But even with Jesus there to assure them, right? What does the last verse of that passage say? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. This entire passage is about fear. It is about fear. And I think there's two things that are important to remember as we kind of dive into this text. The first, the first of those is that Jesus gets on board and falls asleep. And even though fear is running rampant amongst the disciples, Jesus does not rise to the bait. He does not wake up. He does not do anything other than continue to be at peace. I think this is a teaching moment for us. That there are often times in our life when our emotions or anxiety get out of control. When the storms of life come crashing in and we look around for God to step in and do something. And where is Jesus? He's asleep in the back of the boat. Now notice, Jesus is there with them, but Jesus is not going to experience anxiety in exactly the same way as the disciples do. In this passage, the disciples have gotten to the point where it's about fight or flight, right? That portion of their lizard brain has engaged, and they want to run away, but they can't because they're stuck in a boat out on the water. Now these are experienced fishermen, right? And they are afraid. Jesus knows better. No matter what the circumstance is, friend, God is there with you and inviting you to take a deep breath, to let go of that fight or flight reflex, and speak peacefully into that space. 
We don't have control of much in this world. When the storms of life happen, often they are things that we did not anticipate crashing in around us. But Jesus is calmly asleep in the back of the boat and inviting you to let go of your immediate reaction, take a deep breath, and respond with care and love. That's always the invitation. Now, are we good at that? I am horrible about that, especially when I am tired. My kids will tell you, if I'm tired and cranky and I'm at home, I will respond in ways that are much. I will respond with fight oftentimes. But we are always given that option to respond like the disciples or to respond like Jesus, who is calm and peaceful, even when he's woke up in the middle of a deep slumber. Now, the other thing I want you to notice about this passage is at the very beginning. And this is probably the most important thing that the disciples do. At the beginning of the passage, Jesus invites them to get in the boat, and they do. Friends, Jesus is always inviting us to take the next step. And to do that in that same calm manner that he is in while he is asleep in the back of the boat. That next step might be scary. That next step might require um, some patience on our part. It might cause us anxiety. Who knows what it might be? And it doesn't have to be some grand gesture. It doesn't have to be something huge and big. That next step for us can be as simple as making a phone call to a friend that we haven't seen for a while, saying I'm sorry to someone whose feelings we've hurt, inviting someone into conversation uh, that we feel estranged from. And the closer that person is to us, family or close friend, the more anxiety that produces when we think about having those kinds of conversations, where we make ourselves vulnerable in front of someone else. But that's okay. Jesus is there asleep in the back of the boat helping us along the way. And when those storms pop up in our lives, he will get up and say, peace be with you. May the Holy Spirit guide and protect you and give you the peace that passes all understanding. That even when we are afraid, Jesus is there with us. We see this in David and Goliath, don't we? Right? David is willing to answer the call to be the champion of Israel. He sees Goliath out there raging against the army who is petrified of him, and he says, what are you people afraid of? And even though he might be afraid, he still goes out to face him. The most important step in any battle is the very first one you take, the willingness to engage in whatever. Because Jesus is there with you. And sometimes you may not feel it because he's asleep in the back of the boat, but he is there with you in that moment where fear takes over and we want to react. A friend of mine who was in ministry decided that his time to lead churches had come to an end. He was burned out. And so he decided to go off and to start a nonprofit, one that was near and dear to his heart, one where he could work on racial reconciliation between congregations of all shapes and sizes. And so he started a nonprofit and he began to do the work of ministry, helping churches and people come together to heal past wounds, to take the next step together. And friends, That kind of work is really difficult. It is hard work. He was worried about raising money. He was worried about funding the ministry. He was worried about where he was going to work and what he was going to do. All those things came crashing in on him after about the first year, year and a half of that new ministry. And he was at a very low point. And so he went into church one day, the church that he was attending, and he prayed. And another friend of his who happened to be the pastor of that church and, and, and his pastor at that point walked in as he was finishing up his prayer time, and the two of them began a conversation. 
And my friend said to his pastor, he said, I am, I'm at a low point. I'm so anxious all the time. I'm worried. I'm upset. I don't know what to do. And his pastor looked at him calmly and he said, you know, that feeling you get at the, in the pit of your stomach, you know, in the wee hours of the morning when all these thoughts come crashing in and, and you lie there awake staring at the ceiling and you don't know what to do next. You're afraid of failure. You're afraid of that next step. And my friend said, yeah, expecting his pastor to give him words of peace and comfort. And his pastor put his hand out and shook his and said, welcome to the kingdom of God. Sometimes that anxiety, that feeling we get in the pit of the stomach is a part of the journey that we're on. And it is a willingness to take that first step, but to know that God is always with us that sends us out into the world with the assurance that we can get through. And my friend did get through. And the ministry is doing amazing things in D.C., in Richmond, and around the East Coast. Friends, Jesus is with you. You may not feel his presence because he's asleep in the back of the boat, but he is with you. And in the midst of the uncertainty as we take our next step in the journey of faith, he has one thing to say to you. Welcome to the kingdom of God of God. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to enter into a time of prayers and concerns, I'm going to invite Pastor Genevieve up. She's going to lead us in this portion of our service. season and this is what we're going to do we were praying for the names on the prayer list the coronavirus pandemic our nation victims of natural disasters aid workers and missionaries our military those struggling with violence those on the margins of society those being treated for cancer and other chronic diseases, all in need of healing and peace, those things in our hearts. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. We are reminded today, O oh God, of how the strong can be defeated by the weak, of how the exalted and the mighty can be overcome by those who are humble and lowly. And we thank you for this. We pray, O oh God, for all those today who are oppressed, as Israel was oppressed in Egypt. We pray for those who must contend with forces greater than they. Grant them faith and in faith, grant them courage. Act for them and in them to bring about their peace and wholeness. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless us day in and day out. And we ask it through Jesus Christ, our Lord, saying together the prayer he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day. It's not in temptation. Amen, amen. To God be the glory.
Friends, our God is a generous God. He sent Jesus into the world to bring us salvation and life abundantly. Everything we have is a gift from God, and now we have the opportunity to return to God a gift of, of what God has blessed us with. Today, we invite you to come down and to drop your offering in the plate down front. And as you do, we have a very special uh, set of guest musicians. Um, Grace and Pastor Nam are going to share with us their gift of song this morning. And so we invite you to come as the Spirit leads and give abundantly.
Abundant One, we offer you these gifts in gratitude for your steadfast guidance in our lives. We pray that these resources will provide ministries to the suffering, food to the hungry, hope to the poor, a spiritual presence to the needy. In the name of the one who suffered for our sake, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, now hear this sending forth as we prepare to sing our, our closing hymn and go from this place. So now we leave this space of worship. We know God is love. We know Christ's light endures. We know the Holy Spirit goes with us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.